Okay, so welcome to Monday, January 25th. It's our class session. And topics, the sections we're talking about this first day of the week. We're doing four sections this week, two, five, two, seven, three, one, and three, two. So today we're gonna do some examples for two, five, and two, seven. And in particular, I haven't shown you a lot about doing work on the calculator yet. I will show you how to create each of these graphs, histogram, frequency polygon and box plot in an example on your TI-83, TI-84. A TI-83 would work too, but TI-84, and I've got both an ordinary one, dot matrix one, and I've got a color one here, which makes nicer graphs because you can make different things, different colors. But I do want you to be able to draw these by hand, but I also want you to be able to check them on your calculator. And if you have to make a quick graph on your calculator, how do you do that? So that's the topic for today. Is there any questions you wanna put on the board before we get going? Not that I can think of. Usually when I end up going to courses, it questions usually develop if I have any questions as we're going through it. Right. Going. So, yeah. You just jump in anytime. So I'm going to show you an example where we do all these calculations and talk about the things in this section. And just to remind you, when we talked about a set of data and measuring the location I'm going to add that word, measuring the location or center of the data. We talked about words like this, median, quartile, percentile, and stuff like that. Today, <laughs> we're going to be talking about like how's the data spread out is it all tightly grouped is it tightly grouped on one side and not tightly grouped on the other side is it you know how much do the values in that data set differ from the average so we need to know what the center of that data is we need to add words to median. Median was the middle value. If you have 11 values, the sixth one is the one in the middle. But now we're going to add the words like mean. What's the average value? Mode. We're going to use these words over and over again. So don't worry if you don't get the definition right away. Mode means what was the value that happened most often? And then we're going to talk about deviation. So if you know what the average is, and I just pick one of the numbers out of there at random, how far was it from the average? It's called deviation. Talk about variance. Another word for how do the values of the set vary from the center or the mean, median, or mode. We're talking about deviation variance. We're talking about from the mean. So mean is a big word today. And then last, deviation variance, but the most famous word of all, standard deviation. So what is the best guess I can make if I pick a number at random out of the set, how far it'll be from the center. If I pick a number at random at the set, I don't think it's going to be dead center. You know, it might be more, might be less. But how far from dead center do I expect it to be? That's called the standard deviation. Okay, so let's run with this. And pencil didn't show up badly last time on our camera and recording, so I'll do some pencil here and pen as needed. But let's take a 
set of several values. I'm going to write down 40 values. And I took from an example in the book. And I have put them in order. So I'm going to write down three, four. I'm just going to write them down quickly. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sometimes when you're writing them down, it helps to write them down by grouping them in blocks because then you can count them fast, right? So already you know I've written five, ten, ten numbers. Okay, so now the remaining numbers: fifteen, sixteen, sixteen again, seventeen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-two. 24, I'm sorry, let's say 22 again, 22 again, 24, 25, 26, 26, 27, 27, 29, 31, 30, uh, one, 32, 33, 33, 34, 35. Now let's do another 34, 35, 37, 40, 44, 44, 47. Okay, so we have done in the past, now instantly because of the way I grouped them in fives, you know that I have 40 values here, five, 10, 10, 20, 30, 40. So sometimes it helps to group them. It also helps to group them in order because that would help us find the middle one really quickly. So for example, 40 numbers, the middle one's gonna be between 22 and 24 between the 20th number and the 21st number, and you average the 20th number, 22, and the 21st number, 24, the middle number here is 23. That's the median. I could already start to write this down. I will start to write them down in a second. But I also have other advantages by putting these in order. So the median is 23, I think, then I can work out the quartiles by the formulas I used last time. Uh, I haven't used the word mode before today, but now it's a good time to use the word mode. So let's just jot some notes while I'm working. The median is between, these are 40 values, between the 20th and 21st value, and that is between 22 and 24. So that's 22 plus 24 divided by two, just a straight up average, which is 23. The median is 23. Uh, notice, by the way, that 23 is not in this data set. There's nothing that says the middle number has to be in the set. Just think of 23 as a fence. There's a fence in which half of the numbers are below the fence and half the numbers are above the fence. Okay, so now we could do quartiles and things like that according to the formulas we also used last time. I But I, but I was interested in the word mode. So here's the word mode. Mode means the one that appears most frequently. Value that appears most frequently. And in this set, I've got, you know, some numbers only appear once, like three or four. Some numbers appear twice, like eight and 15 appears twice. But as I scan, and since these are in order, it's not hard to scan. I've got a lot of people appearing twice. 22 appears three times. Uh, anybody beat that? 26 is twice, 27 is twice, 31 twice, 33 twice, 34 twice, 44 twice. 
No, nobody beats 22 three times. So the value that appears most frequently, the mode, is 22. Now let's talk about mean. Mean is the straight up average, it means you add all these numbers and you take their average. I am not looking forward to adding up all these numbers. And you know why? Not because I'm afraid of it or I couldn't do it. It just would probably take me 10 minutes. Let's postpone that. Because that's what I want to show you today. Your calculator will automatically add that up after we enter these. Okay. So how about my quartile formulas? So this is all me preparing to make graphs. So remember what the quartile formulas was. Q1, which is the 25th percentile, or the first quartile. So I take 0 0.25 times the number of data elements, n equals 40 values, I multiply by n plus one times 41. What is that? If you ask your calculator, I'll bring the calculator to the screen later, but 0.25 times 41, my calculator says 40, uh, says that's 10.25. So that means look between the tenths and 11th element. 10th element is nicely ordered here. That's why I put them in order, 15. The 11th element is 15. So the average between those two is 15. So Q1 is 15. Median, remember we said the median is 23, but what if we did it with this formula? 50th percentile times 41 is what? Ask your calculator again. 0.5 times 41 is going to be 20.5. So that means look between the 20th and 21st number. And there's the 20th number, 22. There's the 21st number, 24. 22 plus 24 divided by 2 is 23. So that turned out to give us the same calculation we did there. Now let's do the third quartile. That's 0 0.75 times 41. Three quarters of the data I want below this number. And that is going to be 30.75, if you type that in your calculator. And that means I want you to look between the 30th and the 31st number. And there's the 30th number, 32. There's the 31st number, 33. So between the two of those, the average would be 32 and a half. Now, I also want you to see something else because of the beauty of choosing 40. I kind of made it easy on us because that means that the halfway point would be between the first two lines and the last two lines. The one quarter point would be between 15 and 15. The three quarters point would be between 32 and 33. But here you see it confirmed with the formulas that we gave you. Okay, so now I know my quartiles. I know the minimum value is three, and I know the maximum value is uh, 47. So that's enough for my box plot, actually. I'm gonna do a box plot on the calculator in a second, but let's do a quick and dirty box plot. I'm going numbers from three to 47 
I could just use numbers from three to 47, but I guess convenient might be 50. So let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then the five numbers here are the big five. Some people call this the five number summary. And that is, give me the first, give me the last, give me the middle, give me the 25% mark, give me the 75% mark. So when you do a box plot, this is how you do it. The first one was a three. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40. Sorry, I'll advance my paper. I'm gonna call three about right here. I'm just eyeballing it, which is fair. It's fair to eyeball that and call that three if your scale is consistent and neat. Where's the first quartile? 15, I can do that exactly on the 15 mark. Where's the median? 23, you do that as a dashed line. These lines are a little bit longer than that line. Where is the third quartile? 32 and a half. Now remember that's 35 right there. So 32 and a half is dead center between those two. That's not hard to draw. And between those two, you make a box. The median is the middle of that box. Well, sorry, the middle of the data. It's not necessarily the middle of the box. This distance here looks a little smaller than that distance there. And then we draw a line to the first one. And we got to write down the last one, which is 47, about right here. And we draw a line to the last one. This is a standard box plot. Are there any strange values in my set, like values that are way too large or way too small? Remember, I do that with the inter quartile range or IQR. So it says, how much is it from the left of the box to the right of the box, from first quartile to third quartile? What's the difference between 32.5 and 15? That is 17.5. And we take the interquartile range times 1.5 and find out if I have anything way too low or way too high. One and a half times the range, one and a half times this box width above and below the first quartile and the third quartile. So if I do that, 1.5 times this 17.5, my calculator would tell me, is 26.25. And so do the first quartile, 15 minus 26.25. Well, that's way in the negatives. Negative 11.25. I definitely do not have anybody over below negative 11, you know, way over there. Okay, so no really small values. Three was the smallest I had. How about third quartile plus 26.25? Third quartile was 32.5. So 32.5 plus 26.25 is 58.75. And that would be way over here. Do I have anybody bigger than 58.75? The answer is no. Biggest was 47. So I have no potential outliers. We haven't said enough about this yet. Later, we're gonna be more worried about this. And we'll talk more about what do you do if you find one. But right now, I've got no very unusual points, nothing way too large or way too small. And I've got a basic box plot. 
Okay, now let's continue and let's get, now I'm doing this by hand. Let's get the data to construct the histogram and the frequency polygon. And then let's show you how to enter it in the calculator too. Then we'll talk about mean, median, mode, deviation, variance, and standard deviation. So, so far in this problem, I have found the quartiles. I have found the median. I have found the mode. I didn't walk away from the mean, you know, add up all these numbers, take the average. But I am going to say, I don't want to do that one by hand. I'll let the calculator do that in a second. So we'll get the mean in a second. Notice the quartiles were the 25th and 75th and 50th percentile. So I've really done those two. If someone asked me for the 10th percentile, I could use this procedure, this formula we used here. But let's work on the histogram. So I've got my box plot in my hand. Let's work on the histogram. And that means I need to create the classes, the groups of data. So the classes are the data groups I will use. You know, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, what groups am I going to create? So the rules are for doing the histogram. You look at the first element and the last element, and then you look at how precise these numbers are. These numbers are given to you only to the nearest unit, not to the nearest tenths or hundreds. So I'm using here the nearest unit. I don't use anything more precise than that. So my boundaries are going to kind of one up that. Instead of going to the nearest unit, I'm going to go to the nearest tenth of a unit, the nearest half of that. So the nearest 0 0.5 units. And you could say that this boundaries in a way though this is a casual way to say it in english it's not necessarily fair the boundaries kind of one upped the data what i mean by that and that's why i'm recording this is the data is very proud that it goes to the nearest unit well we're going to say well the boundaries are going to be more proud they're going to be more accurate. They're going to go to the nearest half unit. And so my first boundary point, I'm going to say is a half unit below three, 2.5. My last boundary, this is not written in stone, but we're going to find out we can adjust this is going to be 47.5. This is my proposal. So I'm going to start at 2.5 and end at 47.5, maybe. Oh, excuse me. Got to move that up. Keep my data on the screen while I can, but I can always bring it back. Now, remember, I gave you a rule for choosing how many classes should I use? And the rule was this. You take the number of data values and you take the square root of that and you round up, you know, to a whole number. So square root of 40 is about, I don't need to know it super exactly. I don't need to know it with lots of decimals. But, you know, it's about 6.3. So 
I'm thinking my classes, I should use about seven classes. Now, it doesn't mean I'm wedded to this. I'm not forced to use seven. I'm going to use about seven. How do I find out what I'm going to actually use? Well, I take these two numbers, start and finish. I take the 47.5 minus 2.5, divide by seven, and I'll do that number in my calculator. That's about 45 divided by seven. which is about 6.42. That's my proposed class width. In other words, if I have to cover a spread of 45 units, from 2.5 to 47.5. And I want to use seven classes. Then each one's going to have to be 6.42 units long. 6.42, 6.42, 6.42, 6 6.42. My only problem with that is that's kind of an awkward number. I don't like to count by hundreds like that if I'm making a scale. So here's where I'm free to choose another number. Let's choose, this is my proposed class width. Can I think of a nicer class width? It's not too far away from that. I could choose seven. Why not make everybody seven units long? I don't think that's wrong. For what you're about to see though, maybe I could choose eight, seven, eight. I, it's, it's, you know, it's a toss up. Seven, eight. It's kind of a toss up right here. If I do eight and start at there, then five classes is gonna give me a good thing. I'm going to go with eight. I like even number, easy to divide in two. You could do this problem with seven and be completely correct. So you have some freedom. You have, let me say this, write it down. You have some freedom in choosing a reasonable number. for the classes and the class widths. So my reasonable guess was I'm gonna use seven classes with a width of 6.42. I don't like that funny width, so I'm going to change the width to seven or eight. Let's try eight. Now that's going to change the number of classes I use, as you'll see. But I just wanted about seven classes and about six and a half units wide. So now let's do a class width. eight units. So now I'm going to make my table and now we're going to get close to the calculator. So I've got starting at 2.5. Sorry, not 2.8. And I'm going to make, I'm going to you see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave a generous amount of space because I'm going to make notes on the side too. So don't try to crowd things in. I'm going to start at 2.5 and I'm going to go eight steps. 
to 10.5. And then the next class will be 10.5 to 18.5. The next class will be 18.5 to 26.5. I'm making all these eight wide. That's not beautiful clean numbers, but it's not hard numbers to calculate here. I just keep adding eight. Until I'm done. Now remember my data, let's bring my data back here was up to 47, right? So 42.5, I'm gonna do it one more time. 42.5 to 50.5. That's clearly gonna capture all these numbers from 2.5 to 50.5, good. So I've got six classes here. It worked out in the end, I had six classes. Now let's do my frequency right here. Oh, by the way, and I think this is gonna be useful for my frequency polygon. What is the midpoint of each of these classes? So that's why I said I'm gonna leave myself some space so I can write here. Here are the classes. Notice I have left myself a blank line here because I'm gonna write something in that blank line. Here are my classes. What's the midpoint of each one? Because I made them eight wide, each one of them has a width of eight. That means the midpoint is going to be easy to calculate. Add four to each beginning point. 6.5, 14.5, 22.5, add four, 30.5, 38.5, 46.5. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with those midpoints in a second. Now let's write down the frequency. In each class. And now I'm gonna to have to go back here and count. So I'm gonna to have to physically count. How many were between 2.5 and 10.5? That would be these first five right here, not 11. So I got five of those. How many between 10.5 and 18.5? Start at 11, go up to 18.5. So stop, don't use 21, use 18. So I've got five, 10, 11 in that class. This is important, I got to count right. 18.5 to 26.5 starts there. and ends after the 26. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe I can underline them like this to help you see. Those are the ones in the first class. Up to 18.5, those are the ones in the second class. This is why it's nice to have them in order. How about between 26.5 and 34.5? So start here. Go up to 34.5, right there, between 34 and 35. So that's what? One, five is six, four. What's one plus five plus six? Uh, no, no. One plus five plus four, excuse me. That's 10. Okay, good. How about between 34.5 and 42.5? It's a smaller group right here. 42.5 will cut me off at 40. One, two, three. How about above 42.5 to 50.5? These last three. Okay, so now I have my frequency. And I want to make my graph. Now the relative frequency. And that means I've got 40 numbers here. Leave myself some space. I wanna divide each one of these by 40. Now I could do that with my bare hands. For example, five divided by 40, 0 
I could type this in the calculator six times, but that's what I'm gonna to start to show you now. Now let's head to the calculator because I wanna let the calculator do this automatically for me. This will be cool. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna add one more thing. The five is the first five numbers. The three is the last three numbers. I want you to be sure, I want you to acknowledge with me that there are no numbers before that five and no numbers after that five. So in the class before this class, let's do one more class up here backwards. So 2.5, and eight units backwards. Subtract 2.5 minus eight. That's minus 5.5. In that class, and the midpoint of that, add four, is negative 1.5. In that class, there is nobody home. It would be an easy relative frequency too. Now you, you're saying, if there's nobody in there, why are you writing it down? I'll show you now on the calculator in a second. What about this last group that has nobody in it? Just do another eight steps from 50.5 to 58.5. And the midpoint of that, remember, you're going to add eight to this number or add four to that number, 54.5. OK, now. I'm ready for the calculator to do some serious magic. And this is a, a, a good thing to do. And the other thing that's good about this is even if I speak too fast here, which sometimes I do, you will have the recording of me pressing the buttons. Now, here's the downside. Uh, my calculator is relatively small for this camera. So I'm gonna be pressing the buttons, but, uh, and, but you can still read it. It's hard to keep this picture and these numbers on the same screen. So I might, I might hop back and forth. So first thing I'm gonna do is I can enter all these numbers. Do you remember what we said a second ago? I didn't want to do the mean because I didn't want to enter these numbers by hand. But now it's time to enter them. So I can do that two ways. And I'm going to clear this. I'm going to clear these lists I got here because I was doing some other problem. I'll show you how to clear the list later, but basically it's like this. If you're, I, I press the stat button right here to get to these lists. Edit lists. If you wanna get rid of that list, don't delete these numbers one at a time. That could take you a long time. Just arrow up to the L3 and hit clear. And then you can arrow down and it's gone. Arrow up, clear, arrow down, gone. Arrow up, clear, arrow down. So I'm gonna do a kind of a long demonstration with these numbers. How can you find the mean? Let's enter all 40 numbers in this first column and tell the calculator to add them up. I don't wanna add them up. Okay, but I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. The first way is to enter all 40 numbers. So here we go, three, four, eight, eight, 10, 11, I'm not showing you the number pad. 12, 13, 14, 15. I just typed in the 10th number, right, 15. It's good for me to check down here. I'm looking for the next number is the 11th number. So here comes 15, 16, 16, 17. Notice I'm putting in the repeat 17. Then 18. 21, 22, 22, 22. There's my three 22s. And that was the 20th number. So do you see here? It's looking for the 21st number next. 
24, 25, 26, 26, 27, 27, 29, 31, 31, 32. This is a kind of a long list, I admit. Now I've done 30 numbers, but it's good practice. 33, 33. Just make sure when you put in a long list like this that you don't skip something or mistype something. So you got to don't do it too fast. Do it slowly enough that you can be sure that you're doing it right. Here comes the 40th number. Good, 47. <coughs> now, let's have the calculator do the statistics work. So under the stat button again, I can start calculating. And all we're doing in this chapter so far is a one variable statistics. I'm only adding up a list of a single number. We can do more later, but press one variable statistics. And the calculator asks you, what list do you want me to use? And the list buttons are here on the keypad. It's hard for you to read this, but on your keypad, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, with the numbers one through six. So my numbers that I just typed in the calculator are in list L1. So I hit second function L1. And the calculator says, do you have a frequency list? And you say, no, I only typed in one list. I'll show you how to do it with a frequency list in a second. But since I don't have any other list, I'll just clear that out. Sometimes you have to put a one in there, but I'm just going to clear it out, hit enter, and now I'm going to do the calculating. And now the cool stuff happens. So the X bar is the average of adding up all those 40 numbers. So now I can come back here and write down the mean, which in this case I say, X bar is the mean for this sample. And it's 23.575. You say, are you sure? But let's look at what the calculator says. When it says this funny backwards three, that's a summation sign. It's called a Greek letter sigma. This is a capital sigma in the Greek alphabet, the lowercase sigma is looking like that, an O with a baseball cap on it. But the calculator said, I added up all your X's for you and it was 943. Maybe we should add these up by hand and check if it's 943. I'll let you do that. But I'm going to trust the calculator right now. Now, the calculator gave you some other information. Not only did it add up all the x's for you, it squared each one of them and then added it up. Got 27,203. Now, your first reaction is, who the heck cares about 9 plus 16 plus 64 plus 64 plus 100 all the way through the list. That'd be a terrible mess. And the answer is we're going to use this number later, not today, not for a couple of weeks. This number I'm interested in today, this is called the standard deviation. It's either written with an S or a sigma. Why are there two of them? We'll find out in a second. But I'm not going to use this yet. But here, do you see the n equals 40? So the calculator is telling you, this is the safety checks here. Calculator is telling you, I added up 40 people. They added up to 20 to 943. I want to draw ink on my screen. 943 divided by 40 is 23.575. Let's try it. So good, the calculator did do the right average. 
the first thing I got to do is get you used to the screen and get you to trust it. And then the second thing I got to do is get you to know how to read each one of these numbers. There's the average. There's the sum of all the numbers. We'll talk about these three next later. But now look at some very cool benefits here. It not only told you that there were 40 numbers. Let's go down the screen. It told you that the smallest was three and the largest was 47. Now it doesn't take Einstein to figure that out, but what is it? It's a safety check. Do you also see this? It told you the first quartile was 15. It told you the median was 23. And it told you the second quartile was 32.5. So you saw me calculate these by hand, but the calculator can also calculate them automatically. That's gonna be good if we're in a hurry or if we've got a very large set that I don't wanna do by hand. But right now, I want you to see this. I did it right, calculator did it right, we agree. You know, so that's positive reinforcement. Now, Let's see if I can do this another way, because sometimes this is useful. So before I erase this, I'm gonna write down all these numbers, even the ones I did not use yet. And what were they? X bar, that's how you pronounce this, 23.575. The sum of all the X's, that's how you pronounce that, 943. The sum of all the X squareds, why would I need that? We'll talk about it later. This is called the standard deviation the calculator doesn't have subscripts. So the standard deviation of your X values, 11.29076659. I'm gonna write down all the numbers to prove something to you. This is called the standard deviation, 11.14873872. You say, why do I have two things that are called standard deviation? This first one, is the sample standard deviation. The second one is called the population standard deviation. I'll explain the difference between those in a short time. This mean right here this is the mean, but in statistics, people write it X bar. This is called the sample mean. And by sample, I mean, I've taken a sample of 40 values. And this calculator screen is the report on those 40 values. Okay, good. The rest of the numbers are not fancy. 40 values, the minimum value, they call it the minimum X value, but the minimum value was three. The first quartile was 15. The second quartile or median was 23. The third quartile is 32.5. And the last number on my screen was the max number which was 47. The reason I'm writing these all down is because I'm gonna show you another way to calculate them on your calculator that would save you some time. And that is by using the frequency list. The calculator said, do you want to tell me the frequency list? So now I'll show you what the calculator is asking for. So let's go back, get out of here, quit. 
go back to the stat window, edit this menu. And now instead of typing in all the numbers with repeats, which took me a little bit of time, right? Let me type in the numbers without repeating them. I'm gonna bring the calculator closer to the camera. So I still have my numbers right here. Maybe I could put them off the top of the screen like that for you. Let me type in all these numbers, but not with any repeats in this list, L2. And then in L3, I'll type in how many times each one happened. And let me show you what the calculator will do. So I got my three, four, five, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, a little bit of typing, but not bad. 16, because I'm going to type less, 17, 18, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 37, 40, 44, and 47. Now, do you see, I've only typed in 29 numbers because the calculator says the next one is the 30th. So instead of typing 40 numbers, I only typed 29. But now let's go into this list and tell you how many times I saw three. One, three, one, four, two eighths. This is the frequency list. Why do I have a five in there? That doesn't sound good. How do I get rid of it? Let me delete it. Does that work? Oh, thank goodness. Okay, see, I made a mistake in that list, but I can fix it by deleting that mistake. I have all the other ones correct? I hope so, we'll find out when we get down to the bottom. By the way, you don't have to arrow one at a time till you get down to the bottom, right? If you want to reach the bottom, just arrow up off the top, and there's the bottom number. So I've got 28 numbers in there, 28 distinct numbers, and the largest is 47, because it's waiting for the 29th number right here. OK, let's go back to the frequency list. Make sure I'm doing it right. One, one, two eighths. Got it. So it always pays to look what you're typing. One ten. 111, 112, 113, 114. Notice there are two 15s, two 16s, two 17s, 118, 121, two 322s, 124, 125, two 26s, two 27s, 129. Read my paper in front of me. Excuse me, 129, how many 31s? 231s, 132, 233s, 234, 135, 137, 140, 244s, and 147s. So I've reached the end of the list. So I have everything matching. Now you're likely to say, I like the other way because it took me less time. And I say, no, sometimes it's handy to write it as separate numbers and their frequency. You say, is the calculator gonna give me the same answer? Let's find out. So let's do the stat button. Calculate one variable stats. We're not doing anything right now, but one variable stats. We'll go through these other ones later. Not all of them, but several of them. Now, what list do I want to use? I want to use the list of distinct values, which is L2. And the calculator says, do you have a frequency list for that list? And I say, yes, it's called L3. So this is a different way 
to add up all the numbers. Let's see if it makes a difference. And that's why I wrote down all the other numbers. Do you see these numbers that we have here? They're the exact same numbers I had a second ago. I'll put it side by side so you can see it. 2375, 943, 27203, 1129, 076659, down to the last digit. Same here. Notice the calculator still says there were 40 values. Even though I only typed in 28, the frequencies told the calculator I was repeating some of them. Minimum three, quartile one, 15, median 23, Quartile 3, 32.5, max 47. So this is a kind of a good news. When I type in these lists, I could type in one long list that has every number repeated as many times as necessary, or I could type in a shorter list with the frequencies next to it. Okay, good. Now, Let's do some of these plots on the calculator screen. Now remember, I can draw this by hand because I know how to draw this by hand, right? But fancy numbers, a lot of sketching. I wanna draw this by hand. I need to feel in the relative frequency table, right? So now, I want the calculator to do the drawing. So I'm going to fill in these columns here on the calculator. Let's get rid, now notice I only have six lists here. So I want four columns. Well, let's fill them in So what do I got to do? I got to erase some of my stuff here. I can either erase this one or erase these two. Doesn't make too much difference. You know, I'm going to erase this one and I'm going to move these two over just to show you how to do that. So I'll go up to L1, which got a long list of numbers, right? But I'm going to change it. I'm going to delete that clear. And then I'm going to type L2 right here. And that will tell the calculator to move these numbers over here. Done. I moved them all over. Now I'm going to move these numbers over here. So I go up to L2, clear it, and then go up to L2, hit enter and then type in L3 with this key L3 right here. Second function, L3. There, now I repeated the frequency list. In fact, I repeated it perfectly without having to retype it. See how nice that is? Now I'm going to kill the list L3. So I go up to L3, clear. It's gone. Now, why is it gone? because I'm going to put these columns in L3, L4, L5, and L6. So I'm going to let the calculator graph the histogram and the frequency polygon like this. So in L3 and L4, L4 is easy, one number. L5 is easy, one number. I'm going to let the calculator fill in this. But how do I put these two numbers in here? Just put in the left-hand numbers, the left-hand endpoints. So now I'm going to start typing, but it's not as much typing as I've done so far. I'm going to type minus 5 5.5, 2.5, 10.5, 18.5. Remember the class width was eight. So I'm always adding eight. There are ways I could potentially automate this, but 
this is not too many to type in yet. Okay, and I typed in all those. Now I'm gonna type in these numbers, the midpoints. Minus 1.5, 6.5, 14.5, 14.5, 15.5, 22.5, still adding eight, 30.5. Because if I take eight plus each of the middles, I get to the next middle. 38.5, 46.5, and 54.5. Good, got it. Now I'm gonna type in the frequencies because that's not hard to do. Zero, five, 11, eight, 10, three, three, zero. So I've got this nice table going on. Now I'm gonna let the calculator do the dirty work of dividing by 40. Here's how I do it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll bring in my book so I can make this closer to the camera. Now apparently, L6 got a pile of garbage in it from the last problem I was doing. So no problem, I'll just clear it. Okay, so what do I want in L6? I want the relative frequencies. So here's how I do it. I want to take each number here and divide by 40, but I don't want to do it by hand. So what I'm going to tell the calculator to do is take list number five and divide by the sum of list number five. Here's how I do it. Go up to L6, hit enter, type in list five. But I don't want to repeat list five. I want to divide list five by 40. I could type 40 right here. And there we go. But I want to show you what if you didn't know this added up to 40? What if you didn't have time to add this up? So here's how you do that. Take L5. Sorry, clear that. Good. Now go up to L6, take L5. No, I don't want to do that. I want to divide by. OK, I'm in a hurry. I should slow down. Not L3, slow down. L5 divided by the sum of L5. And the sum is a function here under list. There's a key here called stats and list. And list has a lot of extra functions inside it, a lot of extra buttons. So watch me do second function list and go over to the operations like cumulative sum, sequence, and I don't wanna talk about these yet. Ah, these ones sort. Did you know the calculator could sort the list for you? Experiment with that later. I'm going to go over to math and take sum. So let's take the sum of L5. Now watch what happens. I get an error. Okay, thank you very much. Let's go. I want to take, let's try it again. Go up here, take L5 and divide by the sum, second function list, math sum of L5. Okay, I don't, I must have hit a bad button, but there's my frequency list. I'm going to write them down here just in case I want to use them later by hand myself. I already knew the first two. 0 0.275, 0 0.200, 0 0.250, 0 0.075, 0 0.075, and 0, 0.000, that's the last one, that's nothing. 
If I wanted the cumulative relative frequency, the calculator could also add this up in the next column, but I don't have a next column right now, unless I slide over. That's column number seven right now. I'm not gonna do that right now. Let's just go and do the graphs. Okay, now we've done a lot of prep work and you've been very patient. But now I get to show you the graphs done all on your calculator. Remember so far we've done one box plot. Right here. So can I make the calculator do that box plot? Here we go. Go up to stat plot. I'm gonna bring my book back so you can see the keys a little bit better. Go up to stat plot right here, second function stat plot. And some of these are turned on and some of these are turned off. What I'm gonna do is turn each one of them off so I don't distract you yet. Good, so I just arrow up to the top and then choose off for each one. Now they're all turned off. Now let's put the box plot here in plot one. So I'm gonna go into plot one, turn it on. I'm gonna select the box plot, which is right there. That looks similar to a box plot. We'll talk about that one later, but let's just do a box plot right now. Now notice the calculator again asks me, what numbers do you want to use and do you have a frequency list? And in our calculator, that was the first list and the second list. First list, okay, but let me adjust this, make it the second list, L2. Now it's gonna make my box plot in blue. Now, before I do this, let's make sure I got a good window. For example, for the box plot, I have to go from zero to 50, right? So let's try that out. Also, for the relative frequency plot, you notice I'm talking about 0%, 12%, 27%, 20%, 25%, 7%, I'm rounding off. So I'm gonna talk about numbers between zero and one. Notice all these numbers have to be between zero and one, relative frequency. So that's gonna help me set my window. I had already, here, let me zoom standard because I had already done this before, whoops window, there's a standard window, but let's put in the window I want. So I'm gonna take this window according to these classes from zero to 50, right? But I'm gonna want the histogram later. So let's run minus five, five to 58, five. So X min minus 5.5 to 58.5. The scale, I want each one of my boxes to be what? Eight units long? That's the class width. How about my Ys? Let's run them from zero to 0.5, counting by 0 0.05. Uh, let's run them minus 0 0.1. Uh, let's run them 0 0.2. I'll tell you why I do a Y min of minus 0 0.2 in a second. Well, let's press the button and see if the magic happened. There's my box plot. You see the horizontal axis. You see the vertical axis. The only thing that's missing is numbers, but this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. No, that doesn't sound right, because I don't want that to be 50. Here, let me do this magic button, trace. Look at the trace is gonna tell me what each of these lines are, the median, the first quartile, the lowest is three, 
first quartile, median, second quartile, 32.5. Here's the largest at 47. So why did I count like that? Eight, 10, I know what I did. That was eight, eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. Yes, do you remember I chose my X scale to be eight? Now, if I chose my X scale to be 10, it would not changes very much. Now this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. From three to 47. So that's up to you. Maybe I'm gonna leave it at 10 to 50 just to be easy to count. Now let's do some other cool magic. There's the box plot for you. And by the way, it does look like our box plot. This one was the crude one drawn with my hand on the paper. This is the one drawn on the calculator screen. At least I can see that I'm not wildly wrong. Now, uh, I drew a dashed line there. I want you to draw dashed lines here and the median. This is the third quartile. This is the first quartile. This is the max. This is the min. That's why people call this the five number summary. One, two, three, four, five, bang, there's the whole set. The calculator did not put a dashed line in there for me, but you know, I'm not upset about that. Notice that there's smaller box here than here. So there's more data over here on the right. Okay, let's do histogram time. Back to stat plot. So we'll leave that one turned on. I can turn it off if I want to. But let's draw a histogram in plot two. So we'll go in there, turn it on. Here's the histogram choice right there. So I'm gonna go down, histogram, got it. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. Sorry, stat, stat plot down here. Histogram right there, got it. The calculator again says, what list do you want me to use? And now I want the frequency list, right? Which was over here, L6. And I want the class list, which was L3. So let's try it out with L3 and L6. Got it. Calculator gonna make that green. That's okay with me. Graph. There's the histogram. Now the histogram I want to be shifted over. I'm not exactly sure why I'm starting off at that negative 5.5 because I set that to be zero. So now I'm gonna to have to go back here and look at this. I set that to be zero to minus 5.5. Let's go back to my stat edit list. That's a zero in that box. You know what I'm gonna to have to do? I'm gonna to have to go to that graph and ask the calculator the trace feature. What is it doing? What is it drawing for me in green? Calculator right now is on the blue stuff, right? So. It's talking about the box plot. Let me tell the calculator, go down here, hit the down arrow. Now I'm talking about this, minus 5.5, and the maximum is 4.5, and the frequency is 0 0.125. No, that's not good. I think my problem is this choosing by tens here. So let's go back to the window and make the bot, the class width eight. Oh, that feels better. Okay, now I feel better. And let's do the trace. So here's a lesson for you. And I didn't know 
I thought it wouldn't matter if I didn't put that in there. I have to put the class width in here. When I do a histogram, I have to put the class width on that eight. Okay, good. So now back here, now let's trace. I already studied the box plot. Let's trace the histogram. Look at that from 2.5 to 10.5. It's telling me the class right there. I got a frequency of one, two, five. And that's what I have here. From 2.5 to 10.5, I have a frequency, relative frequency of 0.125. Then a relative frequency of 27.5% or 0.275. So I can trace through the histogram like that. That's cool. And then the last one is zero and the first one is zero. Let's do the frequency polygon. Oh, by the way, I said, a, I tell you why I have this empty space here. That's in case I just wanted to space out the drawing and see these words on the screen. Now this calculator, it makes the picture and it puts the words off the picture. In your standard dot matrix version of the TI-84, it put these words on the picture. And so it kind of overwrites whatever you have down there. That's why I gave it extra space. Since I know I don't need that extra space, why don't I go back here and reclaim it? Let's make this 0.0. .0. Uh, I don't like not seeing the bottom. Let's make this minus, sorry, minus 0 0.1 compromise. Okay, now I see the bottom. Now it's time for the frequency polygon. Frequency polygon uses what? The midpoints and the frequencies, L4 and L5. But I don't wanna use the frequency here, these whole numbers, I wanna use the relative frequency. So it's a relative frequency polygon, L4 and L6. Stat plot, come down here to plot number three, turn it on. There's the line graph right there. And I want list four and list six. Got it? Go. There's the frequency polygon in red. It joins the midpoints of each class with the height, the relative frequency of a class. And remember an important thing about frequency polygons. I want you to nail it down to zero in the class that starts before the first class. And I want you to nail it down to zero in the class that follows the last class. That's why I added this pre-class and this post-class, so to speak. Here's my histogram. But in order to draw the frequency polygon, I added a class before with a frequency of zero and a class after with a frequency of zero. Okay, I can draw all three of these graphs by hand, you know that. But now I can draw all three of the graphs on the calculator. I didn't leave enough time to talk about standard deviation and so forth, so I am definitely going to talk about that next time. But let me do a little summary before I turn off the recordings. So we did practice median, quartile, percentile. I even practiced mean, median, and mode. And we did use the calculator to create a histogram, a frequency, polygon, and a box plot. Now the instructions for doing these plots are also printed in your book, right? But sometimes it helps to see someone actually pressing the buttons. I drew a box plot by hand. I drew the classes by calculating First boundary point, last boundary point. I was take an idea, how many classes should I have? Let's try seven classes. 
by the time I got done, instead of classes that are 6.42 wide, I said, let's make all the classes eight wide. What did that do to my chart? Okay, I don't have seven classes. I only have six classes. I'm okay with that. But now I got the classes, I got the midpoints, I got the frequencies, I got the relative frequency from the calculator. And to wrap it all up, I put those lists into the calculator, all of them, and made the calculator calculate the values with one variable statistics and plot the values, box plot, histogram, frequency polygon. Okay, that is a wrap. So I do need to explain what deviation, variance, and standard deviation are. And I will explain them next time. We might even use this set or we might use another set. But standard deviation and variance, let me take off the red graph. Let me just turn off the red graph. I don't have to erase it. I'll just turn it off. You see the middle, the median is about, what was the mean? 23.75? And the median was 23.75, they're pretty close. So the middle of this graph is about at 23. Notice this line is 0, 8, 16, 24. So 23 is very near to 24. The standard deviation says how far spread out are all these values. And when I look at this picture, you know, they're not too far spread out. Most of them are near 23. Do you remember what the standard deviation was? 11.29, 11.14. Let's not argue about which one to use right now. Let's just say 11. That's telling me that most of the data points are within 11 units of 23. Let's go back to this and take 23 minus 11, which is 12, and take 23 plus 11, which is what, 34? Look at that. Most of the data points are between the median, the mean minus the standard deviation, the mean plus the standard deviation. In fact, two thirds of the data are within, this is statistics talk, one standard deviation. Sometimes people abbreviate standard deviation like SD. So standard deviation is a measurement of how wide the spread of data is. This data is not spread out that wide. Just spread out plus or minus 11. Okay, I gotta tell you more about exactly how to calculate that. Notice your calculator did calculate it for you, but I'll tell you exactly how to do it just in case you need to. Okay, I'm gonna, sorry, I keep going on because I wanna keep going on, but uh, we're gonna call it a day there and I'll stop the recording. And...